Peter Valley, FBMaster.com here. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to price used books to sell on Amazon for maximum profits. Step-by-step, step, very linear. There's eight steps to price in any book. Eight steps you go through to go from picking up a book in your hand to deciding exactly how to price it. I'm gonna go through all of these rapid fire. Here's what we're gonna cover. What is the best price for a used book? How do we define specifically what the best price for a used book is? And in part two, the main part of this video, the eight steps to set a price for any book that you plan to sell on Amazon. Okay, guys, can I get real with you really quick here? So um, if you're somebody that wants a low IQ dumbed down version of a pricing tutorial, exit this video immediately. This video has nothing for you. If you're somebody that wants someone to come along and tell them, go through and underprice everybody by 10 cents five times a day until you get a sale, this, has, this video has nothing for you, okay? So exit this video immediately. So you actually have to have an attention span longer than 10 seconds and you actually have to think just a little bit. So if you're cool with that, let's proceed. So you've heard me say before that sourcing inventory and pricing slash repricing are the only two parts of any Amazon business that truly matter. But of these two, pricing is by far the most delicate. So how do we define what the best price for a book is? So here's how I define it. Getting a sale at the highest possible price but also within your desired time frame. Now, the mistake that most sellers make is emphasizing one side of this equation at too much at the expense of the other. So let me explain this. Mistake number one is the sellers that say, okay, I wanna get the maximum amount I possibly can for everything I list for sale, so therefore I'm just gonna price it really, really high. Well, of course, what happens is their sales suffer. Now, the other side of this is pricing too low. You've got sellers that just focus obsessively on turnover, and so they're constantly matching the lowest price or underpricing and doing that multiple times a day, pricing everything frantically like a crazed drug addict to get maximum sales, but consequently, they're not making that much per sale or at least not as much as they could if they priced intelligently. Do not be either one of these. Okay, now we're getting into it. You've got a book in your hand. You're ready to list it for sale on Amazon. How do you set the price? So of course, I've gotta get this out of the way before we get into the eight steps. The obligatory subscribe to the YouTube channel right now, hit the link, and subscribe immediately. You can build an entire business off of what I give away for free, both on this YouTube channel and at fbmaster.com, which you can link to below this video. You can get all this stuff you see here, free reports, free web classes, everything. And if you do not subscribe and go to fbmaster.com right now, I will personally come to your house and rearrange your furniture. I am wanted by police departments around the country for coming to Amazon sellers' homes and moving their couches six feet this way, six feet that way, turning their dining room table at a 45 degree angle, all sorts of shenanigans because people simply didn't follow my instructions to subscribe to the YouTube channel and head to fbmaster.com and get all my free stuff. Okay. Last thing before we get into it, I have an article version of this video that goes a little bit more in depth than I'm able to in this video. You can hit the link below, or there should be a link actually at the top right now, fbamaster.com, read the entire article version of this video. All right, let's get into it. The eight steps, are you ready? Step number one, know your outcome. Now I gotta tell you, this is the only one that requires you to really think. Okay, this is the only sort of slightly abstract one. The rest of them are very, very tactical, very, very specific, but this is absolutely non-negotiable. You must know your outcome. In other words, you must know the general pricing strategy you're gonna follow before you continue forward to price a book for sale on Amazon. Okay, what do I mean by this? You have to decide what kind of seller you are. Are you a volume seller? Are you a margin seller? Or are you somewhere in between? A volume seller is a seller that emphasizes turning over their inventory. In other words, selling it quickly at the expense of not getting as much per unit as they possibly could. A margin seller is a seller who emphasizes getting the most amount of profit they possibly can per item, but their inventory might not sell as quickly as the volume seller. And of course, the third option is to play it safe and just put yourself somewhere in the middle. So you're probably wondering, how do you know if you're a volume seller or a margin seller? I can actually make this very simple for you. Ask yourself this question. In regards to sourcing inventory, which do you run out of first, money or inventory? In other words, Think of your sources right now, where you get your inventory from. Do you run out of, out of money before those sources run out of inventory? Or do you run out of inventory before you run out of money? If you run out of money before you run out of inventory, you're a volume seller. You wanna emphasize turning over your inventory as quickly as possible so you can unlock the, the cash that is, hit, that is locked into inventory and turn it into more inventory. Pretty simple. If you run out of inventory before you run out of cash, then you wanna be a margin seller because you've got more money than you do inventory. So you can afford to sit on inventory a little bit longer and get the maximum amount of profit that you possibly can per book that you sell. Okay, that's step number one. You know what your general broad pricing strategy is. Step number two, pick up the book, okay? Look at all the competing offers. 
is this book profitable by any measure? And you answer this by answering these three questions. Number one, is this book profitable if you matched the lowest merchant fulfilled price? Number two, is this book profitable if you matched the lowest FBA price? Number three, is this book profitable if you priced it anywhere in the lowest five merchant fulfilled or FBA prices? If the answer is yes to any of these three questions, continue. If the answer is no to all these questions, you should not be selling this book, period, except in the most extreme scenarios where a book is extremely high ranked. Okay, step number three, now that you know this book is profitable by any measure, you need to ask yourself, is this book profitable within your fulfillment channel? Fulfillment channel is just a fancy term for merchant fulfilled or FBA. If you're a merchant fulfilled seller, so with step number three, all you're doing here is asking yourself, okay, if I'm a merchant fulfilled seller, if I price this book anywhere in the lowest five competing offers, is this book profitable? Or if you're an FBA seller, you ask the same question just for FBA offers. Now, FBA sellers, I got it. We got to take the side note here, this little pause. I have got to warn you again for the 1,000th time because very few people talk about this. You cannot rely on your scanning app or your listing software to show you all competing FBA offers. You must click over to Amazon and see for yourself on Amazon what your competing FBA offers would look like. All apps, all third-party software has massive blind spots when it comes to FBA offers and they almost never admit this. So in other words, you can be looking at your scanning app or looking at the pop-up in your listing software and you can see, oh, well, the FBA column is blank or there's just one competing FBA offer. Click over to Amazon. About 30% of the time, you will learn that your scanning app or your listing software is actually lying to you. There actually are vastly more FBA offers than what are revealed in the app. Very important, these apps have blind spots. This is imposed by Amazon. It's important that you know this. So what we're trying to do with this step is determine who are we competing against when we list our offer for sale? Are we competing with just FBA sellers, if you're an FBA seller? Or are you competing with all sellers if you're an FBA seller and a book is poorly ranked, which we'll get to this in a second. Or if you're a merch fulfilled seller, of course, this decision is already made for you. You've already decided this. But we have to figure out when we get to step number four here, which regards Amazon sales rank, we have to determine does the Amazon sales rank allow us to compete with just our fulfillment channel, FBA merch fulfilled, or do we need to be competing with all offers? We'll figure this out in step number four. Step number four is to look at the book and determine what is the book's Amazon sales rank. Now, by the way, I'm kind of old school, I guess. I call it Amazon sales rank. It seems most newer sellers prefer bestseller rank, which I think Amazon like technically changed the name at some point. Same thing. Now, the Amazon sales rank is going to answer two questions for us. Number one, if you're an FBA seller, this will answer the question, are you only competing with other FBA sellers or do you need to compete with all sellers, merch fulfilled and FBA? The worse the sales rank, the more you wanna start considering competing with merch fulfilled sellers as well as FBA sellers. And the second thing sales rank determines for us, it allows us to know how high we can price. So in other words, if a demand for a book is really, really strong, guess what? We don't need to worry about competing with the lowest price offer or even the lowest two offers. Sometimes we can price third, fourth, fifth in line or even beyond if the demand is strong enough and get way more profit for the book. Okay, time out. To understand the role that sales rank has in pricing for FBA sellers specifically, I've got to impart this very important concept. The concept is as follows. I want you to consider a book that is poorly ranked. Let's just say 3 million sales rank, okay? Now, how often is a book ranked 3 million selling? Let's just say once a month, round number. So that means once a month, a buyer's coming along and buying the book. That means the lowest price offer once a month is probably going to sell, right? We can assume that. Now, let's just say you're an FBA seller and you wanted to compete only with other FBA sellers. In other words, you're not worried about merch fulfill. You're competing only with FBA and you're depending on buyers coming along that want the benefits of Prime and want the benefits of an FBA seller. Free shipping, the second day shipping, all that stuff, right? The question is, let's say you want to price that book $10 higher than the lowest merch fulfilled price. Okay, there's a $10 FBA premium you're putting on your product. Now, the question becomes, what percentage of buyers are willing to pay $10 more to get the benefits of Prime. We don't really know the number. Let's just say it's one in 10. Okay, so what just happened here? We just took a book that we're pretty confident is gonna sell in the next month with a rank of 3 million. Now we don't know if that book's gonna sell in the next 10 months. If it's one in 10 sellers, we just decreased the pool of potential customers by 90%. So all of a sudden that book that's selling, you know, it's ranked 3 million, not too bad. All of a sudden we might not sell that book for 10 months. And that's assuming the price doesn't tank in the meantime. So what this means is if you're an FBA seller, there's a sales rank beyond which you might want to start considering matching the lowest merch fulfilled offer and ignoring putting an FBA price premium on your product. Because when you do add a FBA price premium, what it does is it decreases the pool of potential buyers 
and you might be sitting on that book for a very, very long time. So this is a very, very high impact when a book simply doesn't have a lot of buyers coming around very often. Okay, so where all of this is going is you're probably sitting back, you're like, all right, Peter Valley, what's the number? What's the sales rank number past which we should not be pricing against all FBA offers, we should be competing against all offers, period. Now you guys, it's really painful for me to give you a number because there's so many variables involved and this is really not that simple of an equation, but I know it's a YouTube video, I gotta just give you a number. So if you're not very experienced with repricing yet and you don't really understand how to make this decision, I gotta give you a number. So again, it's painful for me to, for to say this, but I'm gonna give you a number of one million. If a rank is one million or worse, I want you to consider competing with all offers, not just FBA. Now again, it's not that simple, but I gotta give you a number, so let's just say if you're getting started and you're not super savvy with pricing yet, go ahead and say anything beyond a million, you're gonna go ahead and compete with Merch Fulfilled offers, not FBA only. So what this means is if the sales rank is one million or worse, if you decide to follow this very, very loose guideline here, then consider matching the lowest overall offer not and not competing with FBA offers at all. Okay, so what we just cleared was probably the most conceptually dense part of this entire video. So your brain can relax now, deep breath. Step number five, what kind of book are you listing for sale? Now I'm gonna encourage you if you're a newer seller to literally skip this step. This is slightly advanced and if you're getting started and you like don't know how everything works and you're juggling all these different concepts, I don't want this one to be the one that just breaks your back, right? This isn't the most important. So you can go ahead and skip this for now and come back to it later, but it is somewhat important, okay? So the simplest delineation you can make when it comes to deciding which kind of book you have is, is it a textbook or a non-textbook? Textbooks you can price way, way more boldly as an FBA seller specifically and get sales. And you should be pricing FBA, if you're an FBA seller, you should be pricing textbooks very, very differently. In other words, higher than you do non-textbooks. That's the simplest delineation I can make for you. But in fact, there's actually six different categories of books that will slightly influence how you price them when we get to the following steps. So the categories are as follows. Is it a new book? Is it a textbook? New meaning new condition. Is it a textbook? It is a new condition textbook. Is it an audio book? Is it a book that is likely to become obsolete quickly, like a law textbook or something? And six, everything else that doesn't fall in any of these categories. Which category a book falls in will slightly impact how you price this book when we get into the following steps and actually set the actual price. So let's do a timeout to recap where we're at so far. So far, we've decided what competing offers you're pricing against, whether it's Merge Fulfilled or FBA, and then roughly how aggressively to set your price based on the type of book. So now that we've decided these things, it makes what comes next much, much easier. Step number six, we're gonna look at the pricing history of a book. Now, this is tied with number five as being the least important, which I think will be a shock to most sellers, particularly if you're newer, you're gonna think, well, why wouldn't the pricing history be really, really important? Or maybe you're really experienced and you've been looking at the pricing history for every book that you list for sale. I'm here to tell you, this really doesn't matter that much at all. And I personally almost never look at the pricing history of a book before I set a price. So why is that? The reason is it doesn't matter what the pricing history of a book is. All that matters is the competitive landscape right now. Why do I care what a book's been selling for the last 12 months? If the book's been selling for $100 on average the last three years, and right now, as of this moment, there are 20 offers for sale that are all priced around $12, I'm not gonna get $100 for it. I have 12 competing offers in the $12 range the price in history is completely irrelevant. Now, the only situation where I find this actually relevant is in the situation of a book that has a small number of competing offers. So let's just say you got a book that has a, uh, maybe only, you're only competing with like two or three other sellers, okay? And you look back, at that instance, I will look at the price in history and I'll go, huh, okay, so maybe these sellers right now are selling their, this book for $25, but historically this book's selling for $60. I might be able to wait, depending on the sales rank, I might be able to wait a little bit, wait for those other sellers to sell out, and then you know, an equilibrium will be restored, and I can probably expect to get $60 or maybe even more for that book. So I might decide to hold my ground when I'm only competing with a few other sellers. But if I'm competing with, you know, the average book is 30, 40, 50 other sellers, right? I, I don't care what the history is in that situation. Okay, now we get to step number seven. Now now that we've thoroughly analyzed a book, which by the way, everything we just covered, once you get good at this, you can assess in under 10 seconds. Okay, I don't want you to think this is some big thing where you pull out a whiteboard and you have to like, you know, map out like a, a, a complete strategy of going to war or something. That's not how this works, okay? So we've assessed everything, you'll get good at this 
happens really fast. Step number seven, this is where we actually finally set the price based on what we learned in steps one through six. So would you guys like to know what your seven pricing options are? You only have seven. I'm gonna break down the list right now. You ready? Here we go. The seven options you have when setting a price as of this moment, step number seven is as follows. You can match the lowest price. You can price against the second lowest price, price against the third lowest or beyond. Again, this depends heavily on the Amazon sales rank. Number four, you can price against the buy box. Number five, you can set your own price below all competing offers, which I recommend only in the most exotic scenarios. You should almost never underprice the lowest offer. Number six, setting your own price. This applies only when there's no other competing offers. You're the only seller for an item, so not that, not that common. Number seven, pricing against Amazon's offer only when you're only competing with Amazon. Those are the seven options. Okay, so let's cover when to apply each of these seven. Number one, match lowest price. This is for most inventory that has medium demand and is selling steadily, but not necessarily multiple times a day. Now, when do you price against the second lowest? And when I say price against, I either mean match, price slightly less or slightly higher, but where the second lowest price is like your anchor price. This is for most inventory that has medium to strong demand. In other words, you know, maybe one to like half a sale on average per day. And by the way, all of this is subjective. I'm just giving you some loose guidelines to follow here. Okay, option number three, pricing third or beyond. This is for very high demand items that are selling more than on average, more than one copy per day. Number four, the buy box. This is a controversial one, at least for me personally. I personally do not recommend pricing against the buy box. I don't ever do it for any of my inventory. Um, anchoring your price to the buy box is a personal choice, but you gotta remember the buy box price is very fickle and it's probably overemphasized when it comes to sellers thinking the buy box is some magic price they have to chase constantly. I personally don't recommend it. I have a whole lengthy article about this on fbmaster.com if you wanna understand why I think chasing the buy box is a bad idea. Option number five, setting your own price below all competition, okay? So this is when the lowest price, and you should not do this very often, by the way, this is when the lowest price is what I would consider to be unreasonably high, which is, again, it's a subjective calculation. It's up to you to decide if the lowest price is ridiculous and that no one can ever expect to get a sale at that price. You ever see a book and it's like $300 and you're like, and it's like a romance novel. You're like, no one's ever gonna pay $300 for this book. It's possible they won't. But again, only do this in the most rare scenarios. Price and option number, what are we at, six? This is where you set your own price. This is an opportunity to price your item very, very high when you have no one to compete against. In other words, you're the only seller for a book Minimum you should price a book at when you're the only seller is $25 and I will price as high as $499 and I've gotten many, many, many $499 sales. I'm gonna do a whole, whole separate video about this, about how to assess where in the spectrum you can price. But if you're the only seller for a book, never price it for less than 25 and my normal default price is $99. Pricing option number seven, when you're only competing with Amazon, this is where you've decided a book is in high demand enough to where you can ignore all F competing FBA sellers, all competing merch fulfilled sellers and price above all of them. And then you bump up against the Amazon ceiling. Remember, you can never price higher than Amazon and expect to get a sale. Okay. So never price higher than Amazon. So this is where you're deciding, okay, how much lower than Amazon should I price? Should I price 25 cents lower, a dollar lower, $2? I usually price somewhere 50 to a cents to a dollar lower than Amazon. That's a good mid range rule to follow. Step number eight, this is the fun part. This is where you just, you've gone through all the steps. You just simply commit to a price and move on with the understanding that you're never gonna get it exactly right. There is no such thing as the right price. So if you have any doubt, that's completely normal. Don't worry, you're, it's never gonna be perfect. You're always gonna wonder, could I have gotten more for this? The answer is probably yes. It doesn't matter if you follow the steps, you got close enough and that's all that matters. We are almost at the end and a big, big, big lesson here is that small decisions when it comes to your pricing strategy can have massive, massive impacts on your business. One small adjustment that makes you an extra $50 a month compounding over years, that's a lot of money. And when you have 10 tweaks that add up to $50 extra a month, that could be a massive, massive boost to your revenue. So these are no small decisions when it comes to repricing. There's no such thing as a small price and strategy decision. So now that we've covered all this stuff, you now have a three-part mission. Mission number one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You must do it now. I will come to your house and rearrange your furniture. Subscribe right this very second. Step, mission number two, you can build a whole business off of what I give away for free at fbamastery.com. There is a link below this video. You can get all my free reports, all my free web classes, everything but you've got to do it right now. Hit the link below this video. Mission number three, take what you learned in this video and put it 
into action. Our time together has been wasted if you do not put this into action immediately. Go back and watch the video again, take notes, read the article at fbamaster.com, put it into practice. Thank you guys so much. This is Peter Valley signing off and I will see you in the next video.